In this video, we're going to talk about four different types of grit materials that I have been using in the last 10 years since I've been vermicomposting. Grit is important because similar to chickens, worms need the grit in order to process the food they're taking in. Eggshells are by far my number one source of grit in my vermicomposting operation. And the reason why I love them is because once you grind them, they give you a really nice granular texture and the calcium in eggshells helps you neutralize acidity when you add fresh food scraps into your system. One of the drawbacks of using eggshells as part of your vermicomposting system is the risk of getting salmonella from eggs into your vermicomposting bin. So if you're gonna use eggshells, you wanna dry them for at least up to six months to a year, which is what I do. Or if you need to use them sooner, you can put them in the oven at very high heat and let them dry and then grind them. The second source of grit that I wanna talk about is biochar. We have a whole video on why I love to use biochar in my vermicomposting system. I don't necessarily use biochar as the main source of grit, but biochar has a lot of different qualities. And one of them is a very stable um, carbon structure that resists decay. Biochar also helps um, neutralize pH and it creates an incredible source of habitat for microorganisms. Because remember, worms eat microorganisms and the microbiology inside of your vermicomposting system, inside of your worm bin, is what's breaking down the food is what when I think about finding sources of grit for my worms, I want something that is not only gonna do one function. And this is again, thinking from a permaculture perspective of having different elements fulfill multiple functions. A lot of the elements that I described here today, sand, eggshells, biochar, fulfill multiple functions besides just giving the worms a source of grit. Now the next, source of grit that I'm going to talk about is actually something that I came across quite recently and this is actually bone meal. I was not looking for bone meal as a source of grit but I came across this material because after doing a soil test in my new homestead site I realized that my soil needed more phosphorus. Actually the soil has quite a bit of a phosphorus deficiency so I was looking for organic materials that would increase the amount of phosphorus. It's when you purchase bone meal so you get a lot of big pieces of bone. You know, one of the reasons why I was so excited when I came across this particular product when I opened the bag is because this material has already been uh, processed. Um, I wouldn't exclusively use bone meal as my source of grit, but in my case, I'm trying to increase the amount of phosphorus available in my fertilizer. I do have a very strong feeling that this will be an, a pretty, pretty good source of grit for my worms. Um, so this is a novelty. This is a new material that I'm experimenting with. If you have comments, if you have any experience working with bone meal as a source of grit, please let me know in the comments. The next source of grit that I'm going to talk about is a little bit on the controversial side because most people will tell you don't use sand as a source of grit in your vermicomposting system. The main reason why folks don't like using sand is because it has a tendency to compact. If you add too much sand to your warm bin, it's going to go down to the bottom and it's going to start to pack and it's gonna form zones where oxygen cannot penetrate. So those are anaerobic areas where anaerobic bacteria is gonna to start to thrive and that can potentially start to generate smells. That said, in the wild, sand is a natural source of grit for worms. Worms will naturally go down into the soil, the top layers of the soil to get sand and use it as grit. When you think about the places when we find worms in the wild, it's usually areas with a lot of leaf litter where there is not a ton of sand, but it's just enough that they can find it and use it as grit. So I use that same analogy in my vermicomposting system when I'm using sand. I essentially use a very small amount, usually about once a year, I add sand to my system and it's right around the time when I'm getting ready to start doing the big harvest. 